Hi, I'm David Curry. I assume that's better. Uh, I'm going to talk briefly about building our regional database and estimation system for commercial fisheries data. And with most projects presented here today, this is worked by a group of people, and I'm just the, the acceptable face of the project at the moment. So the main driver for the, the work is the EU Common Fisheries Policy, um, which aims to ensure that fishing and aquaculture are, are sustainable. So that's biologically sustainable and economically sustainable, since fishing is an economic activity. And also the aim is to foster a dynamic fishing industry. Uh, data collection is essential for the implementation of the CFP, and we need a scientific evidence base for the decisions that are made as part of the CFP. We need to evaluate the state of fish stocks and also profitability and effects on the wider ecosystem of fishing. Uh, fishery scientists in particular want to calculate the size of fish stocks and the fishing pressure that they're under. Um, to do this, we need to combine census data from commercial fishing activity, from our commercial fishing fleet, um, with biological sampling, and also other data uh, such as uh, fishery surveys. Um, the scope of the the existing regional database and the new regional database and estimation system is limited to commercial fisheries data. We're talking about sampled biological data and census data on landings and effort. And I often tell my children the world isn't fair and commercial fisheries data is certainly not fair. We're talking about closed data. This is personal data because you can indirectly identify living people. So we're starting to fall under, what well, we do fall under GDPR and other data protection laws which really does limit what we can do. So just showing the, uh, the existing system. So on the left, we have our national data and national databases. And these are two of the main routes as to what happens to that commercial fisheries data. The top route shows it going to the existing regional database through a data extraction from each country's national database. And then this is used by regional coordination groups who are EU groups who coordinate um, the commercial fisheries sampling activity. And we're really talking about the north of Europe here, so North Atlantic, North Sea, and the Baltic Sea. The bottom route is showing what happens for stock assessments. So national data is again extracted from national databases, but we're talking about raising data here. So this is taking our sample data and raising it to the level of the population. This goes into an IC system called Intercatch. Uh, expert groups at ICs then use Intercatch and apply models and also combine other data sources such as the fishery surveys and produce advice, which goes through advice drafting groups and eventually through ACOM and is issued as formal advice in terms of the fishing activities for the next year. So the main problems is lack of transparency. Um, when you're talking about the raised data, you don't really see how people raise that data. All you see is that the final output of the raised data in Intercatch. It's duplication of efforts, um, because each country is having to do everything independently, often using different techniques. And there's also a duplication of data, because you've got data in the regional database, and you've got data in Intercatch that have been extracted in different ways. And they almost certainly don't give you the, exactly the same answers. And there's lack of consistency, really deriving from the fact that each country does its own thing to a certain extent and there's a lack of data quality indicators. So what we're proposing is to replace the existing regional database with the regional database and estimation system and remove Intercatch from the, the scene completely. In this case, the, the top data is still going through the regional database and estimation system and going to the regional coordination groups. But instead of the, the data for stock assessment going through Intercatch, it's now being raised directly from the regional database and estimation system. So the aims of the RDBES are to make data available for the RCGs, which are the regional coordination groups, provide a regional estimation system for IC stock assessments, to increase the data quality documentation and the usage of approved methods, and some broad aims about facilitating the production of fisheries management reports and the awareness of fisheries data collected in general. Um, this isn't just something we thought up out of the blue. There's been a number of um, initiatives through ICs and through the, the wider EU commercial fisheries um, that we've been moving towards. So the first of these is statistically sound sampling schemes, often called 4S, 
Um, this is to try and move to more probabilistic sampling. And the RDBES helps that by allowing that to be documented. Uh, greater regional coordination, it's high on the agenda for the EU generally. The IC's transparent assessment framework. So Carlos touched upon it earlier in his presentation. But ICs are trying to be more transparent in everything they do. Um, because we're talking about commercial fisheries data, which is personal data, we can't be fully transparent, but we can try and increase the transparency. And also just to improve the estimates to um, the IC's stock advice, stock estimates, assessments and advice. So I've broken it down into four real components of the RDBS, the data model, the estimation methods, the application itself, and the workflow. Most of the work so far has been done on the data model, so I'll concentrate on that. Really consists of three parts. There's the CL, which is aggregated commercial landings, the CE, which aggregated commercial efforts, and the CS, which is the detailed biological samples of commercial fisheries. The CL and CE we're currently using as straight from the, the existing regional database data model. So CL is landings, whole weight and value aggregated by country, month, year, and down to IC statistical rectangle, species, species presentation type, and so on, and metier. And similarly, the commercial fishing effort is aggregated by country, month, year, statistical rectangle, landing ports, and so on. So for the CS model, we started by taking the existing regional database model and seeing whether we could adapt that. Um, we end up having to sort of throw that away to a certain extent and start again. We haven't completely removed all the concepts, but it's, it's fairly different to what exists. So it's based on the actual design of fishery sampling programs. So these are usually multi-stage hierarchical sampling. And the final fish you're measuring is selected through a series of stages. Uh, at each point, you'll be sampling a certain number of things from each stage. So an example, maybe a, a fishing trip may have a, a number of hauls. Um, you'll sample a number of those hauls. Each haul will produce a number of baskets of discards. You'll sample a number of those baskets and so on, down to the fact that you're measuring an actual fish at the end. Typically, the sampling stages will be stratified. There'll be a mix of probabilistic sampling and non-probabilistic sampling. And there's no real single sampling design in use. And we also want to record things like refusals and non-responses, and also allow clustering sampling designs to be, to be recorded and used. So we've, we've got a model that consists of a number of sampling units. So we've got design tables at the top, which basically tell us what the model is going to look like. And we've got primary sampling units. These are things like you can select a vessel as your primary sampling unit. You can select a fishing trip. You could go to a port on a particular day. And then below those, you have intermediate sampling units with no particular limit on, on how many different things you'd be sampling. And then at the bottom, we've got an actual sample is taken, and we take typically length frequency data and biological measurements of the fish. So the way this, an example of how this works is for an onshore trip. Um, samplers go to a port, and they sample a number of the vessels that have landed. From those vessels, they sample a number of the boxes. From the boxes, they sample a number of the categories and so on. So we have the fact we have a design table on the top, sampling details. We have onshore events, which is essentially typically a, a visit to a port or a market by samplers. And we have a landing event, which is the landing of a, a fishing trip. We have species selection. So we may well not be sampling all the different species in the landing anyway. And we may only have a, a limited list of things we want to sample. So if we have this species selection, it allows us to identify true zeros rather than just the fact that there's nothing in the data. And then we have a sample. So at the moment, we've identified eight of these hierarchies. Uh, three of them are at sea sampling, and five of them are onshore sampling. Um, we've been trying to talk to the samplers to try and cover as much of the real sampling as possible. I've got a feeling that some of these will actually coalesce into one particular design. And we may have to add more hierarchies in the future as people actually change their sampling design. So the, the quality of the sampling program, we're describing using what we're calling design variables. At each level, so essentially each row of the data, you can include the fact whether the stratification, the name of the stratum, and the number of units in that stratum, 
the number of things you sampled from those units, um, the inclusion probability, so if we're talking about equal probability, um, we don't have to worry too much. If we're talking about unequal probability, it starts to get more complex. You can include the inclusion probability. The selection method, this can be things like um, simple random sampling. Often we'll be talking about um, ad hoc sampling or expert judgments, and we can document those at each of our different levels. So we may well have our primary sampling unit is selected randomly, but later on our particular fish or a particular box might be selected using expert judgment. We can also talk about things like the reasons why we're not sampling. So perhaps we were refused entry to a port or a vessel refused us entry to actually sample their data. And we can also add things like clustering. And we'd also know, because we've got the detailed sampling data, the number of samples we've actually taken. So we can actually get more statistical data quality. Um, we can talk briefly about the estimation methods. And typically this is called raising. So we're, we're taking uh, our sample and trying to raise it up to the, the level of the population. And the idea is to try and approve, encapsulate approved raising methods. So we don't have to have each country designing their own raising methods from scratch. We can actually collaborate a bit more and come up with an approved set of methods that we can then perhaps configure for each country. So this would help document what's actually happening, which is quite difficult at the moment. Uh, increase the transparency of the process. Hopefully should reduce duplication, certainly of effort. You'd hope it will be reducing errors and increasing data quality, because if it's not, then there's no point. Um, we want it to be able to support estimation methods that are currently in use, so things like ratio estimators. Also be able to support design-based estimation, which currently I don't think anyone's really using, but there is an interest in trying to promote it within the community. Um, the application, we've designed it, well, I say we've designed it, we've um, sort of scoped it out based on the fact we've got transparency throughout the system as far as possible. So we have common data quality checks that are written by experts that are then available from other experts. You can download it and run it on your own data. Um, we want to have a system where new methods can be incorporated into the system. So particularly you might have a, an expert group that can look at proposed new methods, proposed new scripts, and then approve them and make them available for other people to use. And then, so our main end user at the moment are ICs and RCGs, um, but also other people like the STECF would be interesting as an end user. And also countries could use it potentially to create their own national work plans and reports. And the main thing is just try and get rid of the black boxes. There's black boxes everywhere in commercial fisheries data. So just try and get them out of the system as much as possible. So ICs are currently developing the application. They've already been working on the, the upload system at the moment and the, the generic validation. So I'm gonna talk briefly about the workflow. So currently each country raises their own data for stock assessment and then the expert groups use that raised data. Um, once we've got the RDBS, we don't need to follow that model. We can have a model where we have a single stock coordinator who looks at all that detailed data and does the raising themselves. We can have the same models we've currently got where each country raises their own data. Some sort of hybrid in between where the stock coordinator raises most of it and perhaps countries with specific issues raise their own data. And this can vary per stock. So the way we were possibly thinking about it. So one workflow would be to have a data compilation workshop first, where everyone uploads the data they've got into the RDBS, you bring the experts together, and then you agree on how you're gonna raise the data for that stock. And then eventually it goes on to the assessment working group. So the next steps, um, the RDBS is still in development at the moment, so the existing RDB is still active. From 2020, we would be looking at freezing the existing RDB and having data calls for the, the RDBES. I'm just gonna say the, the next steps, yeah, there's an ICES workshop in February, which is a hand-on workshop to try and populate a new data model with countries' real data, and also an estimation workshop in October, November next year to try and estimate using that data. And for the funding, the existing RDB is funded, with the maintenance and hosting of it is funded by the commission under an admin agreement with ICES, and the initial development of the RDBS has been funded by ICES, along with member states contributing experts' time. Cool, thank you very much.